I think we've all seen AI-generated, computer-generated ads like this one. We've covered them multiple times here on What's Up The Makeup. But what if I were to tell you that there was a company that made one of these actually for real for real in real life? I have all the details on how The Ordinary pulled this off. We also have Too Faced kind of copying off of a concept that Mac has been using for years, but just like with Mac, it doesn't seem to be working so great so far, but I would love to hear your thoughts about it. And also, in a surprise move by Revolution Beauty, it looks like rock and roll beauty is coming back. I have all those details, plus all of the makeup launches this week from mainstream brands, a ton of indie brand launches this week, and we have a ton of sales because it's President's Day here in the US, lots of sales going on. I have all those for you, so hang tight. We are about to jump into it right now. Before we get started, just very quickly, this video is not sponsored, but my video, the main top news segment of What's Up In Makeup yesterday was sponsored by an app called Iris. And the reason why I'm mentioning it now is because there is a giveaway involved in that app and I wanted to make sure you knew about it in case you wanted to enter it. All you need to do is download the Iris app. You're going to hit on the little uh, magnifying glass at the bottom. That's going to bring you to the main page and what you're gonna see at the top is my face. It is the Gen Love Iris giveaway. You're going to click on that and then you're going to create a list of at least five products that you either love or don't love. It doesn't matter. Just a list of five products that you feel like you can review thoroughly. Once you review those five products, you are entered to win a hundred dollar gift card to either Sephora or Ulta. You are going to get to choose. I'm genuinely so excited about this app and this giveaway. So I wanted to just give it a quick mention here as well, even though they are not sponsoring this particular video, I wanted to make sure you heard about it. Now let's jump into the story about The Ordinary because I find this absolutely fascinating that it's The Ordinary that did this because The Ordinary can't do anything the way that is typically done. It's the abnormal beauty company for a reason. So we've been seeing these ads from companies like Maybelline and Kylie Cosmetics and all these different companies are doing these AI looking ads. Well, The Ordinary decided they were going to do something like that, but make it real. And they made this giant bottle of their reformulated product. It is the hyaluronic acid 2% plus B5, giant bottle of it, and they floated it down the Thames. <laughs> Middle of London, they've, they're just floating it down the Thames. The ad agency that created this campaign, they're called One Agency Media. They did post a TikTok and they said that the bottle was 12 meters high, which shakes out to about 40 feet tall. But what I found interesting is that The Ordinary's customers were actually really not happy about this because The Ordinary has really targeted people that are environmentally conscious and people were upset about the waste of creating this giant bottle. What's going to happen to it? And also the diesel gas used and, and all of the things, basically just all of the waste and environmental damage in creating this ad campaign. This was the response from The Ordinary. They said, hi, we share your concerns regarding our impact on the planet, which remains at the forefront of all our decisions. The bottle was made with recyclable materials with the fiberglass outer shell being recycled down at local recycling facilities and the steel beam being donated for repurposing. The barge used to power the bottle's journey emitted 90% less CO2 emissions than usual marine diesel. We hope this alleviates some of your concerns. Thank you for your feedback. It's always valued and we'll be sure to pass this along to the broader team. Have a great day. I have a feeling that The Ordinary knew that their audience was going to react this way. And I think that probably played a big role in why they had these things already put into place. It's part of the brand's identity to be eco-friendly, to be cruelty-free, all of those things. I would personally love to know what you think about this. Do you think that The Ordinary's environmental statement is enough? Do you think that this is just a really freaking cool campaign? Or do you think it's inconsiderate? Because maybe people are trying to take a picture of the Thames and there's a giant bottle of The Ordinary stuff in the middle of the water and it's ruining their shot. I would love to know any and all thoughts down in the comments. So it feels like I could be wrong here. I could be totally wrong. 
but it feels like Two Face is not doing great. I don't know. I just get this impression. Uh, and I think that they're trying to find new ways to sell products. And I don't think this is a bad idea. Basically, they're, they seem to be biting off of Mac's underground program. And if you're not familiar with that, basically, Mac comes out with these super limited edition launches. Maybe it's a shade extension like they did the Mac Stack mascaras in like green and blue. And, and those sold out super, super fast. But they've been doing this where they come out with like weird products. I think the most recent one was a highlighter that was like gold or silver. That one didn't seem to be quite as popular. But anyway, the point is, is it's supposed to play off of like a fast fashion, you know, trends for collectors. So Too Faced is doing something similar. It is called Fantasy Factory and they've released their very first product. Here it is. Tell me what you think. So it is a super limited run of products specifically for collectors. This is the Disco Crush Eye and Face Sparkle in the shade Heart Eyes. It is $30. It launched on February 15th. And as of me filming this on February 17th, it is still very much available. I, my thoughts on this is I feel like if you're going to do this, then it should be something that people are really excited about. Something that that really draws a lot of people. And I just don't think this is it. I think there's a target market for this that's really going to love this. But I don't feel like this product is universally appealing to a lot of people. Especially the Too Faced audience, which are really into cool packaging, honestly. They have kind of a mix of more natural makeup lovers and more colorful makeup lovers. But they're not a super colorful brand. So I would think that they would create maybe an eyeshadow palette shaped like a teddy bear. Did they already do that? I can't remember. Or something like that. You know what I mean? Like something that people are like really, really excited about and make it very limited so there's a bunch of hype about it. That makes sense to me. This just doesn't. I'm actually surprised that Too Faced would pick this as their first Fantasy Factory launch. I'm wondering what the logic is behind that. And what I'm also wondering what the logic is behind is the upcoming relaunch, it looks like, of Rock and Roll Beauty. Rock and Roll Beauty launched as an independent brand. We later found out that they were owned by Revolution and they were all about products that were in partnership with rock bands. So they had a Def Leppard collection, they had an Ozzy Osbourne collection, I can't remember any of the other ones, but there were a couple, I think Twisted Sister was another one, there you go, Twisted Sister. I'm not sure if there were other ones, those are the ones I remember off the top of my head, but they ended up closing down the brand. They put everything on deep discount. They closed it down last spring, so it's been almost a year since they were closed, but they put this post up on their Instagram and it looks like it's a play off of an Ozzy Osbourne song, Mama, I'm Coming Home. But the thing is, in yesterday's top news segment, we talked about how Revolution is all under new leadership and they are trying to come out with less products. This would not be less products. This would be more products. But I think that they realize the power of that nostalgic connection and they feel like they're, they want to put their eggs in that nostalgic basket. You know what I'm saying? I feel like this is a pretty smart move for Revolution to reanimate. <laughs> I'm like, reanimate. Like, what does it mean? Like, bring back alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Bring back rock and roll beauty. I don't think that it's a bad move, but based on the products that I got, I ended up buying the Def Leppard collection, did a full review of the products. They were pretty crappy, to be honest. Like, there really wasn't anything that I liked except for the eyeliner. The eyeshadow palette was straight trash. It was awful. So hopefully, like I was saying yesterday, with Makeup Revolution, they need to increase the quality of the products. They need to not just throw color in the pans. They need to make sure the colors perform if they want to have a shot as, at being a top drugstore brand. We have two new launches from Pat McGrath this week. Mm. Honestly, though, this is the thing about Pat McGrath is you never know if they're actually new because Pat McGrath has been doing this and she's really been pissing people off. So what she's been doing is she's been taking old products and then just putting them in new packaging and trying to sell them. And the people on Trend Mood are thinking her latest product is one of those things. It is the Mothership 8 Divine Rose 2 Hearts Desire Edition. Like I said, people over on Trend Mood are saying that it is an exact copy of another palette. It's just in different packaging. She's also upped the price point on these. She's now charging $150 for one of these palettes. Beyond that, she's launched a very interesting lipstick. This is the Matte Trance Lipstick Marc Jacobs Edition. It is coming soon for $39. And I thought this was kind of interesting because if you remember, Marc Jacobs had his own cosmetic line that closed back in 2021. So this is the first time we've seen Marc Jacobs on a cosmetic product since then. And I know Marc Jacobs has a ton of fans in the fashion world. Also, 
people from the makeup space that really loved his product. So I'm curious to see whether a Marc Jacobs branded lipstick is going to sell well for Pat McGrath. A spokesperson for the brand said that it is a limited edition release crafted with love by Pat to commemorate Marc Jacobs' legendary 40th anniversary in fashion. Nabla Cosmetics launched a brand new palette. It is the Liberty X Forget Me Not palette. Single shadows are €8.90. That's about $10 USD. You can grab an empty palette for €10, which is about $11 USD. The whole palette, if you build the palette with the shades, is going to cost you about €46 or about $49 USD. It is very pretty, but that seems really expensive for just four pans, even though they do seem really unique and they probably were more expensive to manufacture. I feel like Nabla price point used to be a lot less than that. I don't know. Am I wrong there? This next product is probably one of the most interesting launches that we have this week that I find very, very interesting and is from Huda Beauty. Uh, she has two what she calls creamy obsession eyeshadow palettes. They're actually creamy eyeshadows in pans. There's eight creamy shades and then there's one what she calls a translucent shade for the palette. Palette names are grayish and neutral brown. The promo videos for this are so cool with the texture of the palettes really truly being creamy. And my first thought is how do we apply these? And that was answered by Huda Beauty's Instagram. It looks like they're using fluffy brushes with the cream products, which is not something you typically see. So I'm glad that they do seem to work with fluffier brushes because I know that I don't really know how to apply <laughs> cream shadows very well without using a fluffier brush. So I'm glad that they showed that on their Instagram. I'm very intrigued by these. We have a sneak peek from Patrick Ta Beauty. The name of the product is For Face and the shades all we can see so far are not too much just enough and she's the moment they are coming on February 19th whatever it may be from another post it looks like they're also releasing cream blushes but it looks like the four face product is a different product I just realized February 19th is today in your time it's two days from now in my time so you might already know what these things are I don't though on in February 17th my life I don't know yet, but you probably know. Go check their Instagram. It's probably over there. Arriving soon to the US from Kiko Milano is their spring line. They have a perfecting face powder, a luminous cream blush, two multifaceted eyeshadow palettes, and a length and definition mascara. Now, Thrive Cosmetics knows how much people love their mascaras. So they have released three colorful shades of their Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. There's a purple, a green, and a pink. They're available now for $25 each. Yensa Beauty is working on color correctors. Those are launching on February 20th. We also have a new palette from Violet Voss. This is the Pretty in Paradise Face and Eyeshadow Palette. It is $43. They say this carefully curated collection of shades is designed to transport you to the lush landscapes and vibrant colors of a tropical paradise. And I will tell you, I'm, I'm getting close to being ready for spring. I don't think this is a bad time to launch a palette that's like spring summer themed. I'm cool with it. And also in consideration of the fact that it is summer somewhere else. Not here, but, you know, on the other side, down there. <laughs> well, not down. Shut up, Jen. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> In indie brand news, I am so excited for this, my friends. The Odin's Eye Legendary Diversa 2 collection with the same influencers that did the Legendary Diversa collection before. We have Judy, we have Annette's Makeup Corner, and we have my girl, Tina from the fancy thing. I have the palettes here that they came out with last time in case you were curious. This was Judy's palette. It was called Red Dragon and it looks like this. We also have Annette's palette. It was called Giant Wolves and it looks like these. And then Tina's palette, the Hummingbird palette, and it looks like that. So the new palettes that they came out with, Judy is continuing her Chinese New Year theme with the Year of the Dragon inspired spring dragon palette it is a mint green and pink color story to create a spring inspired color scheme then we have Annette continuing to build on Norse mythology she's created the mighty monster palette inspired by the Midgard serpent the color story is a combination of warm cool and earthy tones and Tina's palette continues to take inspiration from her home country of Jamaica with the earth wood palette it's another vibrant color story blending bronze tones and 
soft purples. Now, price points for these, they're $37 each, but they've also released lip products to go along with these. Each palette has a lip collection that includes a glow lip gloss and two shine lip stains. They are $14 each. But if you want to buy one influencer's full collection, you'll get the palette, you'll get the three lip products. It costs about $71 USD, or you can get the entire collection of the three palettes and the nine lip products. That's going to cost you about 200 bucks. Another collaboration for you. We have MBA Cosmetics collaborating with Basket Case Beauty. It is available now. It's a 16 pan palette called Moonlit Marsh. And there's seven matte shades, seven duochromes, and two shimmers. Now this next indie launch, I'm very excited about it. I was there for the video premiere on their YouTube channel. I didn't even know they had a YouTube channel, but I went to their Instagram and they're like, we're gonna premiere the video in like 20 minutes. I'm like, woohoo. So I watched it and I'm actually pretty excited about this stuff. So Lethal Cosmetics is dropping 15 new products on February 23rd. All of them have a sparkly theme, but they have a new formula that they are launching. They're called Prisms. There's gonna be six of those available. It is a gel-based multi-chrome flake. And what's cool about these is that number one, they're eye safe because a lot of glitters, you know, they might have sharp edges. But because these are made from minerals, they're 100% plastic free and of course, eye safe. The gel base of it, they say, does help it adhere to the eyes, but they say when you wanna wash it off, it's really easy to wash off because it is water-based. You just have to kind of give it a little rub and it just kind of falls off. The new Prism products are $21 each. They are also launching five multi-chrome hollow shadows. Those are $17 each. They're going to be sold as individuals or as a custom palette. There are also four iridescent trichromes. Those are $9 each and they could be used as eyeshadow or highlighter. I do think that she said those are also going to be available as a palette. We got a sneak peek on Instagram at the next Ensley Rain Cosmetics palette. It is called Groovy Garden. Their IG post says, quote, stay tuned for the full reveal and more details coming your way. It's going to be a trip. Peace, love, and groovy vibes. Fantasy Cosmetics has a new The Wizard collection. It includes an eyeshadow palette, a highlighter palette, and a perfume. The highlighter palette shades shift from gold to green, blue to pink, or purple to gold. They say it is perfect to use as a highlighter, a blush topper, or as an eyeshadow. They say that the perfume is inspired by laying in the grass and studying the night sky. This scent is described as refreshing grass, water, and wood scent with citrus accents. Prices range from $2.29 for a sample of the fragrance to $39 for the eyeshadow palette. You can get the entire collection for $53. On to Cara Beauty. They have two new palettes. They're called First Kiss and Puppy Love. They're $9 and they are available now. Now this brand was brought to me by The Hunters. I've never talked about this brand before. I did not know they existed, but it looks so fun, especially if you are from the Philippines or if you are connected to Filipino culture. It is very rooted in that. Most of their products are food themed, which I think is really neat. Now they are thinking about coming out with these lip balms. They look like little bowls of cereal, but they're running into a problem and it's taking them 20 minutes to just make one of them, <laughs> which, you know, logically, if you're going to make thousands of them, that's probably not, not going to be a thing. So they have to figure out how they're going to cut down the time it takes to make each one of these, but they are super cute and they're asking if people would buy them if they did make them. And the last thing I wanted to mention in Indie Beauty News is is some sad news in that the owner of Indie Beat Cosmetics, her name is India, her husband has recently had a stroke and he is in the hospital. He is in recovery, but the hospital is about an hour away from where she lives. She's trying to continue to raise her kids. Her husband isn't going to be able to go back to work for an undetermined amount of time, so she is asking for some help. There are a few ways that you can help India and her family out if you choose. She has set up a GoFundMe. She also has her cosmetics available from Indie Beat. I have tried them. The ones that I have tried, I have very much enjoyed. She did send a few of them to me in PR at one point. So you can go, go ahead over there and buy them at full price. But if at full price is out of your price range, she is running a 50% off sale to try to get some money to help her family. So you can use the code that is on the screen now to get 50% off. She did ask, however, for a little bit of patience in shipping 
shipping the products out because she is dealing with this long drive to go see her husband and also taking care of her kids. So she's asking to please be patient on the ship times, but she will get everything out to you. And I just want to wish him a fast and complete recovery. And India, my heart is with you. Moving over to Sephora, we have a couple of shade extensions on products. We have from Lancome, two new deep shades of their Tianta Doll Ultra. 24 hour long wear matte foundation, $57 for that product. And a shade extension coming soon from Danessa Myricks of the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder Flushed Matte Color for Cheek and Lip. The new shade is in It Girl, which is a bright pink. It's $25. Also coming soon from CL, we have the Blush and Protect SPF 50 Plus Liquid Blush. Two new shades in June and January. Those are $34 each. And now on to the new new at Sephora. Coming from Glossier this week, we have the Cloud Paint Gel Cream Bronzer in five shades, $22. They say it gives skin a natural wash of warmth, dimension, and sculpted color. Bosma Beauty, the cream blush, now has launched in six shades. It's $28. They say it's a buttery, soft, buildable cream blush and lip tint that melts into the skin for a naturally radiant finish. The packaging looks like it was designed to throw into your bag. So if that's something that you want in your life, that is now available. And then we have a ton of products listed as coming soon. Most of them don't have dates, but they're coming soon. Going back to Danessa Myricks, we have the Yummy Skin Moisture Repair Balm Serum with Hyaluronic Acid and Squalane. That's $38. This is how they describe it. This 98% natural balm to serum intensely hydrates, repairs, and soothes with our Moisture Repair Complex, a blend of 16 nourishing ingredients. So I looked into this to see what skin types this might be best for, and the main ingredients in this are camellia seed oil, jojoba seed oil, cocum butter, shea butter, and sunflower seed oil. So this looks like it would be best for people with dry skin specifically. It also has some good skin balancing ingredients in there. So if you have combo skin, this might be one you want to look at. And they do use some less common ingredients in here, things like the cocum butter. I don't know if I've ever seen that in a cosmetic product. Of course, I'm sure that it's in lots of things, but I haven't personally like looked at a product and seen that in there. Also seeing the camellia seed oil as the first ingredient, this is probably going to be a relatively unique formula, at least to things that I've seen. So if you've never tried anything like this and you want to try something new, you may want to check this out. If you have oily skin though, check out the other product they're launching. This is the Yummy Skin Water Powder Serum. It's $36. They say it's a mattifying water to powder serum that primes, absorbs shine, and visibly refines skin with a comfortable matte complex, a unique blend of seven potent ingredients. The ingredients are more focused on that oil absorption. There's also a lot of hydration ingredients in here. There's niacinamide in here, which may help with the appearance of pore size as well as hyper pigmentation. They also have a gentle PHA chemical exfoliator in this product. So this is going to be for a completely different group of people. So hopefully if you love Danessa Myricks, this may give you a better idea of which product might be right for you. Moving on to a new brand at Sephora that is launching on March 5th. It is called Hello Sunday. I went to the brand website to check it out. This is what they say. Launching with a bang in 2021, Hello Sunday has been on one simple mission to encourage all year round SPF protection because every day is a sun day. <laughs> There's five products altogether in the line, two having a makeup twist. So let's talk about those. The Shimmer One, which is an SPF 45 face and body mineral glow stick with hyaluronic acid. It's $22. And then the Invisible One SPF 50 hydrating sunscreen plus primer with hyaluronic acid. That's $28. We don't typically talk about glow recipe on what's up in makeup in the product report, but here we are because we don't, they're, they're, they're blurring the line between a makeup company and a skincare company. The lines are just all over the place. There, there's no line anymore. It just doesn't exist. So we have the Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Hue Drops Sun Glow Serum, $35 available on the app on February 22nd and all other platforms on February 23rd. It is a, they say, a clinically effective serum with a sheer tint that even skin tone with a warm glow while niacinamide visibly brightens skin over time. Main ingredients are hydrating ingredients, antioxidants, and of course that niacinamide. Speaking of skincare companies that have makeup-y things coming out, let's talk Peter Thomas Roth. Now I have trust issues with Peter Thomas Roth because of that dang Firm X under eye stuff. That stuff just, it's weird. It's really weird. It's like, it, it, I'm going to show you the video that went viral with that stuff. But just so you know, at least for me, the effects of this, it does do that, but it lasts for like a total of like three minutes. 
And then as soon as you start moving your face, just all the wrinkles come back, at least for me. That's the way that it works. Maybe I just don't have enough wrinkles in order for it to be good for me, but I just, I have trust issues now. And this is part, the product I'm going to tell you about is part of the Firm X line. So I'm not sure what that means. Here we go. Here's what it is. You can decide for yourself. The Glow Filter Priming Serum, it's $42. They say it's a hydrating, priming, illuminating serum that visibly lifts and defines your skin right away while sculpting its appearance over time. So they use an ingredient called Actigym, Clinical Contouring Technology 5%. But what is that? And, and what does sculpt the look of skin mean? Like, phys like I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this, and I've been thinking about this since I found this product. Sculpt the look of skin. Like, I know sculpt the look of the face. Like a, an, like a contour, you know, would sculpt the look of the face. But this is sculpting the look of the skin. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, it's a mix of, like, humectants and antioxidants in there. Does this thing work? I have no idea because I can't figure out what that means. Maybe I'm just, am I being dumb? Like, <laughs> I don't, sculpt the look of skin. What is that? I don't know. I have no freaking clue. But there are some shimmery things in here. So you probably, when you use this, you are going to get a little bit of glow in there. You're also going to get that hydration, which if you have dry skin, might give you a little bit of brightness as well. So maybe that's what they mean about sculpt. I don't know. I don't know. But if you get this, you've got to come back and tell me. You have to tell me. What does it do? <laughs> Moving on to Cali Ray, we have the Hideaway Brightening Plus Hydrating Under Eye Color Corrector Concealer, eight shades, $28 each. See, that makes sense to me. It is a color correcting concealer. I know what that is. <laughs> they say it's a clean, long lasting, lightweight, serum like color corrector that quickly brightens and hydrates under eyes to conceal dark circles without caking or creasing. That makes sense. We also have from Clinique something that is not shocking. We have an all about shadow eight pan palette, two different colorways here, $47. Colors are pink honey and black honey, also not shocking, as well as a single shadow, which is kind of weird, but it's just hanging out by itself. Single shadow in French vanilla, that is $23. From Colfi, this looks so much like the Too Faced product, the Fluff Up Brow Wax. So we have the Free the Brow Volumizing and Laminating Brow Gel. It's $26. They say this flake free formula locks eyebrow hairs in place for up to eight hours with a firm yet flexible hold. It gives brows a laminated effect or smooths them into a perfect arch by using the three-in-one tool designed to deliver more defined, fuller eyebrows. Hmm. I will tell you, Too Faced sent me the other one in PR and I have been using it all the time since. The only thing about the Too Faced one is it really does hold. So if you're not looking for that like... <laughs> you know, like slathered, like stuck to your face looking brow, you probably don't want that. But if you like the feather brow look, the Too Faced one is fantastic. I'm very curious how this one compares in formula. And this one, this is weird. Like I personally, again, I have never seen a wand quite like this. It's very odd. This is the Refi Lash Sculpt Lengthen and Lift Mascara. It is $26. It looks like something straight out of Shark Week, doesn't it? Like it looks like some kind of sea monster. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's like, like so, I don't know. I feel like it's going to just eat me. I don't know. But anyway, back to mascara. It's not going to eat you. I don't think it will anyway. <laughs> so, so what I'm thinking about this is if you look at the wand, the way that the bristles are, it looks like this is going to be a very thin formula and that it's going to give a lot of length and not a lot of volume. But that matches with it being the Lash Sculpt and Lengthen Lift Mascara. Like that's what it looks like it does. But if you're looking for volume, I would imagine this is not going to give that to you. It is very interesting and I give them 100% credit for trying something new. And I hope it works for people because it's it's different. I will definitely give them that. Givenchy has something that's a little more normal looking. We have the Le Interdit Volumizing and Lengthening Mascara, $35 for a full size, $19 for a mini. They say it's buildable and offers increased volume, visibly longer lashes, and 24 hours of long wear. It looks like it has those hooky bristles, and the hooky bristles typically comb out the volume quite a bit. So I would imagine this would have to be a really thick formula for you to get real good volume out of it. So if it's a nice thick formula, you might be fine as far as the volume volume goes, but chances are I would imagine this would also give a little more length and volume. I will tell you though, with the Sephora stuff, the next two are the ones that I am most excited about. So we have from Merit, the Signature Lip Lightweight Matte Lipstick. 
eight brown and reddish shades, $26. Packaging, super, super cute, very pretty, very luxe looking. It looks like a really dry matte, but the description is getting me on this. They say it's a lightweight, soft matte lipstick that has a non-drying formula for buildable color that feels like nothing on the lips. I want that. That is sounds very good to me. What also sounds good to me is the new product that's coming from LYS. This is the Higher Standard Cream Glow Blush Sticks, $20, five shades. Again, I really like the packaging. I love how they're sticking with the triangle theme. Like it's so simple to have a triangle theme, but I would imagine it's a lot harder to get products in a triangle shape than what we would imagine because it just doesn't typically come like that. So I would imagine they would have to get custom packaging for everything. They say it is an irresistibly creamy blush stick that instantly brings a flush of color to the cheeks with an illuminating finish. All right, you ready to move on to Ulta? Ulta does not have nearly as much this week, but what I found was First Aid Beauty because again, we're going the theme of a skincare brand that's kind of dipping their toe in the makeup space just a little bit just a tiny bit. So the first thing is very similar to what we talked about earlier, the bronze and glow drops with niacinamide. $28, they say, gives an instant glow with a bronze kiss of color to visibly even skin tone, blur pores, and hydrate. And then this obviously is a skincare product, but who knows, maybe they could tint them at some point. We have the Ultra Repair Lip Balm, $14, instantly hydrates to banish dryness and flakes, leaving lips soft, supple, and plump with a subtle sheen. I'm honestly surprised it took First Day Beauty this long to come out with a lip balm. Very surprised. Did they come out with one before and I just missed it? But yeah, I'm, I'm surprised it took them this long, but I'm glad that they have one. A little overpriced, but you know, it's First Aid Beauty. Of course, it's going to be a little more expensive. REM Beauty, we talked about this last week that this was dropping. It is now at Ulta. It's their new spring collection. Prices range from $20 to $26 for the Hypernova Satin Matte Bronzers in six shades or the Hypernova Satin Matte Blush in eight shades. They also have the Mist Thing Hydrating Setting Spray and two brushes, the B1 Blush Brush and the B2 Bronzer Brush. I'm so curious about the formula change on these because it, uh, chances are the formula is going to be different because they've now formally separated from former brands. So I'm very curious whether the formulas will improve because I heard some not so great things about the formula before. So I'm hoping, I'm rooting for this brand to be so, so much better. And then this one, I had to end with this one because I am very excited. I remember going to like Ipsy Gen Beauty and iMats and seeing JCat Beauty and the people there were always so nice and they just fell off so hard. They fell so hard, but they are back my friends. JCat Beauty, is back. We have the two-in-one piece of cake blush and highlighter. It is coming soon. $8.99, three colorways. It's a Kaja style looking thing. So you've got the one blush on the top and you lift that up and then you lift up the next one and there's the highlighter underneath and it's got their little cat in there. And it's so freaking cute and the packaging is such an upgrade from what they were giving us before. So I'm really, really excited about this. Congratulations, JCat Beauty. Welcome back. All right, my friend, PR purchase product of the week. I have a couple of things to share with you. The first thing I wanted to share with you is this. This is the Danessa Myrich Yummy Skin Glow Serum. I got this in my Beautylish Lucky Bag and I'm absolutely loving this. This is definitely my favorite product I've ever gotten from Danessa Myricks. It is such a nice product. So I usually just take it like this and run it down my finger and that's enough for my whole face. So let me show you kind of what that looks like and then I will see if I can do this. Bloop. My hands are a little bit dry. I can feel it. Ooh. My hands are very dry. Okay, so hopefully that will help them a little bit, but you can see there's a little bit of a shine. I'm gonna let that dry down and it smells really good. It's got kind of a light floral scent with a touch of fruitiness to it, a touch of sweetness. It smells really, really good. And I've been putting this on underneath my foundation. And I have to say that it's kind of, every once in a while I'll find a foundation where it kind of breaks up a little bit. I don't, I didn't write down what foundation it was that it broke up a little bit, but most foundations it seems to be working really well on. There's a little bit of tackiness to it now that it's drying down a little bit, but let me dry, let it dry down completely. Come on, come on. Okay, this is it completely dried down. So you can see it just has a little bit of shine to it. And that's what I really like about it because it makes those lighter coverage foundations a little less matte and kind of brings a, just a gentle glow to the face. It's not overpowering at all. And I love the smell of it. The smell of it is beautiful. So the other thing I wanted to mention to you is I think I showed you this in live chat last week. I don't know if I showed it to you in the product report, but I got these from Vampire Cosmetics. These are the Oregon Trail Pack. Last week, all I had was you've made it to Oregon, but then I also got 
this in the mail this week. This is You Died of Dysentery. And I, I have to show you the, the actual, let me show you it in the box because it's so cute. If you were a kid who had the first computers in your classroom with the big floppy disks, you should probably remember Oregon Trail. If you aren't familiar with this game, Oregon Trail was first made in 1971 by Don Rawich, Bill Heineman, and Paul Dillenberger as a way to teach Rawich's history class about the American West. Since then, it's been updated slash remade on a ton of different platforms. The objective is to journey across the West in a wagon with your family in the hopes of making it to Oregon. Computer game that taught us about the Oregon Trail and what it was like. And you had to make choices to figure out what you were gonna do to see if you could make it to Oregon. And like, nobody made it to Oregon. <laughs> I don't think I ever made it to Oregon. I think that I had a friend or a couple of friends that made it to Oregon, but I didn't. So this is the way that it looks in the box. And it is so freaking cute. I will tell you though, I mostly got these for nostalgia's sake. I didn't really get them for, I wanna use these as my daily eyeshadow palettes. And I'm kind of glad because I did use two day the you made it to Oregon palette I just used the natural shades because you know I, I'm wearing kind of a more natural outfit so I just used these three shades here and I'll tell you the quality of it wasn't great um it real real patchy especially the gold rush shade I really felt like that one was more of a topper shade but some people really like these so let me just show you I'll just swatch them on my hand real quick the swatches actually look pretty good I'm surprised, I'm surprised the swatches look that good. So maybe it was just my application method, something there, but I just felt like that the, the shimmer shades that I used today were kind of dry and a little bit difficult to keep onto the lid the way that I wanted them. And I felt like I really needed to use other shadows from other palettes to beef up the pigmentation of them on the eye. I think next time what I'm gonna do based on these swatches is just apply them with my fingertip and I'll probably have a much better experience with them. And I've literally only used those three shades. So this isn't a full review of this palette by any means. Mostly, I just think that they're really cute and they're so adorable, so I wanted to show them to you. In case you were curious, on my lips today, I have this from PR. This is the ColourPop Fresh Kiss Lip Lacquer, and this is in the shade Macadamia. That's what's on my lips today. My cheeks today are a blush from Koki. This is the Soft Gradient Blush in Bellissima. It is so, so pretty if you've never seen one of these Koki blushes. And then I wanted to share with you my eyeliner today. I found these and I, they're so good and I missed them. These are makeup Geek eyeliners. I was so excited to find these I was like yes I really wanted a blue lower lash line and this gave it to me I'm so sad makeup geek is no longer but but I saw my eyeliners and I'm very thankful to still have them also in PR today is my highlight the extra glow you see on my cheeks is from this this is from Catrice this is their new soft glam filter liquid it is a glow booster it's the same as all those other the Charlotte Tilbury and the elf and the everybody's probably pretty much making these but this one's really really pretty I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it for you in a different spot so you can see see they do have different shades of these because they are relatively opaque for a product like this you definitely need to pay attention to the shade they're specifically for different skin tones so you want to make sure you get one that's similar to your skin tone so that is the glow on that it's not overly powerful um, and you can see it on my cheeks it's not like super from space it just gives that nice fresh glow Notable sales this week, so many, because like I said, here in the US, it's President's Day. So lots of sales. We have from Juvia's Place, President's Sale, 50% off of all eyeshadows. Sigma, 30% off of select items with code Long Weekend, And you'll get a free eyeshadow palette with orders of $100 or more. That eyeshadow palette has a value of $29. Nikia Joy has 20% off of all eye products. It Cosmetics, 50% off of select items. Milani has a buy one, get one, 50% off lippies with code love, 30% off site wide with using code inner30 at Erno Laszlo, up to 30% off last chance products at Bobby Brown. At Sol de Janeiro, spend $65 and get a free 25 milliliter boom boom cream and a free 12 milliliter boom boom body for Meza oil. I haven't seen that product. That looks kind of interesting. <laughs> From Bare Minerals, Murad, and Laura Mercier, they're having the same sale. They're giving you 50% off of sale items. 20% off President's Day sale over at Polish Choice. And finally, buy one, get one free brushes at Anissa Beauty. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, thank you as always to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you so, so, so much as always. And thank you 
for watching What's Up in Makeup. I appreciate you. If you enjoyed, please hit the thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And if you would like to hang out a little bit longer, I always have something for you to watch. So over here on the bottom, you're gonna see last week's product report. It's right there for you. YouTube is actually gonna pick the top one for you based on videos you've watched in the past, what video they think you're going to want to watch the most. But if you do have to go because you got stuff that you, you gotta do today, I get it. It's no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And I'd love to you and I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.